So let's return to this example code from the Optiplex 7010 BIOS and try to fully understand what exactly was going on. Now we understood that there's a particular format to the CF8 register and so values placed in it will be parsed according to a 8 byte 8 bit offset, a 3 bit function, a 5 bit device and an 8 bit bus. So Basically, we decoded that before to bus device function offset 0, 31, 0, F0. And so how would we figure out what this is? Well, we would, of course, read the fun manuals. So specifically, the PCH data sheet, and we had found that this bus 0, which we said Intel reserves for its own use, bus 0, device 31, function 0, was the LPC interface. Now, if you happen to be one of the students who had a 7010 in front of you, then you could just use the typical device ID lookup, looking at offset 2 in the configuration dress space where you find the device ID. But I didn't actually have a, one of these yet when I was first making these slides, so I just Googled it, and Googling it, you can find this link, which tells you that this is a 7 series PCH. So that's the data sheet which you're going to want to look at. Once you open up the 7 series data sheet, you're going to find this on the sidebar, which is the LPC interface. You can see that there's many different devices here specified. So we can see device 30, function 0, device 31, function 0, device 31, function 2, 5, etc. So when you see that, what you're going to see is a whole bunch of PCI configuration address space specified. So, right, offset 0 is the vendor ID, which will always be 8086 on Intel hardware. Offset 2 is the device ID, which we used for identification. So, it's just a whole bunch of, you know, 256 bytes of PCI configuration address space, which is here to tell you how Intel has chosen to place information in here. Now, we actually saw this before at the very beginning when I was just kind of throwing labs at you, even though you couldn't possibly understand them. We said, you know, what if I told you that you could partially control memory to flash mapping? And in this lab, it was this offset, D8 and D9, inside of the LPC interface, which was the BIOS decode enable. That was that thing that basically allowed you to unmap certain portions of the physical RAM, sorry, physical memory to flash access and basically you couldn't unmap the very end, you couldn't unmap FFFFF, et cetera, but you could unmap something that was further down. So back then what we were seeing here is we were looking at the configuration address space of the LPC device, didn't know what we were doing or why we were doing, but basically that is what was happening then. Now this is actually where we're trying to get in this class. This is the BIOS control register. This has to do with access controls. We said we're on our way to flash access controls and we said we needed you to learn about all this stuff like PCIe, configuration address space, port IO, memory mapped IO. So you can see that here this is, that's where we're trying to get to, one of the places we're trying to get to. And you know, that's why we need to understand this. But for now, let's continue to just explain what, what was happening in those first few assembly instructions and why uh, the Dell BIOS might have been accessing this offset F0 inside the LPC configuration address space. So that has something called the root complex base address. So let's look at that. If we go into the datasheet a little further, root complex base address register, and we know that a value was written there. Let's see, it was uh, fed one c Okay, so fed one c zero zero and then one is what was actually written there. So the least significant bit one seems to be an enable bit and the upper bits seem to be a base address. So I'm going to call that the, so it says the enable is uh, the range specified in the BA base address is to be claimed by the root complex register block. So I'm going to call this base address the root complex register block base address or Rickerba. Now Rickerba in this class is going to be represented by this nice can of RC Cola. Just need some, you know, things to visually represent this because, you know, we get into a lot of acronyms and abbreviations and some are more important than others. If they're important, they're going to get an icon. So this particular base address in this particular register is Rickerba, and I'm going to introduce another association. I'm going to call this RCBA register, you know, I want you to think about Mirror Universe Spock. 
because basically CBA, ABC, CBA, ABC, backwards, forwards, mirror universe. Yes, we just, we need anything. And, you know, I'm grasping at straws here because, you know, it's all dry material. So our CBA, which is mirror universe Spock, holds Rickerbaugh. And, you know, he finds this association most refreshing. So our CBA, ABC, CBA, ABC, CBA, Mirror Universe Spock holds Rickerbaugh. And I know that sounds more Klingon than Vulcan, but, you know, we're just going to go with it. So that brings up the question of what exactly is a root complex register block. Well, it turns out that a root complex is a PCI thing that has to do with the access to memory for PCI devices, as well as the CPU. So I really like this nice clean diagram from Wikipedia, which shows PCI devices, it shows that there are switches inside of the PCI network, it shows things like PCIe to PCI bridges to, you know, access between different buses if there's some legacy devices on some other bus. And it shows how both the CPU and the devices are mediated by the root complex when they're trying to get to memory. I think this kind of shows a little bit more intuitively how something like DMA might work, right? So DMA is the concept of direct memory access, and we know that certain PC, PCIe peripherals can directly access memory without having to go to the CPU, the CPU fetching it, and then it coming back down. So with this notion of a root complex, it should hopefully make a little more sense why there's some hardware that can just say, oh, you're trying to get there? Well, I'm just going to route you to memory and send the memory back to you. Again, that's for things like, for instance, a NIC card, which needs to read and write packets. So the CPU might put some packets in here, and then the NIC card is just reading and writing them. So reads them in order to send them out of the network and writes them to put a buffer of new incoming packets there for the CPU to check at its leisure. But so this uh, root complex register block uh, back in the old data sheets, they showed it a little bit nicer. Don't have a really good way to see it in newer data sheets. But, you know, back in the, you know, Northbridge, Southbridge world, you had the graphics and memory controller hub. And so if we said on this previous slide that the root complex is the thing that mediates access to memory, and we said that back in the day, the memory controller hubs had direct access to memory and the CPU didn't until it was merged up during the, the great PCH merger, well, then it makes sense that there would be root complexes inside of the memory controller hub. And indeed, it turns out that there were multiple. There were two root complex register blocks that could be specified in the memory controller hub. One for the egress port, meaning the access to main memory, and then one for DMI, which is that connection, that interface down to the ICH back then. So nowadays on PCH-based systems, the root complex would be in the CPU. But like I said, there's no good way to visualize that with Intel's documentation anyways. So what exactly is this Rickerbaugh and Mirror Universe Spock up to? And, you know, why would Dell be setting this particular value? So we had device 31 function 0 and offset F0. So offset F0 is our CBA, CBA, ABC, CBA, ABC, Mirror Universe Spock, which holds Rickerbaugh. And so what Dell was doing is they were writing a Rickerbaugh value of, you know, fed 1C, 000. And so that Rickerbaugh is the root complex register ba uh, block base address. So we want to see what this root complex register block is. So it's some chunk of memory mapped I.O. And Dell had written some particular base address to say, I want this memory mapped I.O. range to be at fed 1C, 000. So what's inside of the root complex register block? A whole bunch of registers, yay. You know, it's just, you know, registers within registers within registers. So there's a whole bunch of stuff there and most of it we don't actually care about. But later on, we said that we're trying to get to the spy, the flash access control mechanism. So later on in the spy section, we're going to, you know, start at this diagram and we're gonna see that inside the root complex register block, for some older machines, not the newest machines, but some older machines, at offset hex 3800, there is going to be some particular memory mapped I.O. registers that have to do with reading and writing the flash chip. So because of that, I want you to go ahead and look up your Rickerbaugh right now. 
And so if you go to your data sheet and you find device 31 function zero offset F zero doesn't actually have the RCBA, then that's fine. That means you're probably running one of these newer systems, you know, a sixth or seventh generation core or a greater than 100 series PCH. So that's fine. You don't need to write it down. But for everyone else, if you go to offset F zero and you find your Rickerba, write it down because you'll need it later.